Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good this morning. In fact, that's what I want to preach about. I want to preach about flying in the Holy Ghost. Flying in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Is there anything better if this same spirit which dwells in you shall be there when the trumpet sounds, it'll quicken your mortal body and catch you straight up out of here. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 1. Find it in your book in your Bible, in your iPad, in your phone, somewhere. Amen. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God to the saints who are in Ephesus and faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to the adoption as sons of Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glory of his grace by which he made us accepted in the beloved. Father, thank you for the Holy Ghost today. Bless every one of your saints. Put the Holy Ghost on them in a special way. Let the favor of God rest upon the people of God this week and let us walk in victory and in peace with you. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. God bless you this morning. Flying in the Holy Ghost. This sermon was prompted by my youngest daughter who now lives in Texas, but we talk constantly and, and are beginning to pray every day together. And she shared with me a dream that she had. She was being chased by demons. And this evil was just everywhere. And she said, I saw darkness cover the earth like there was no sun. It was just dark. And I knew this darkness was not natural. It was spiritual and that it was enveloping the land. She said, I felt demons begin to come after me and I was extremely afraid and I began to run from these spirits but they began to overtake me. She said, I began to cry out to God and say, oh God, don't let me be caught. Give me something. Take me away. Let me escape. Give me victory. Give me rest. Help me to find a hiding place. And she said, as she began to cry these things to God, that God's spirit came upon her and God spoke to her heart, why are you worrying? You have the Holy Ghost. And she said, I thought, that's right. I have the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And she said, I begin to, in my dream, I begin to move my legs like I was riding a bike. And she said, as I moved my legs while I was running, like I was riding a bike, suddenly I was caught up and I began to go into the heavenly realm. And she said, I left those uh, cadre of demons far behind on the earth. And she said, wow, how fast I'm moving and I'm like a space capsule. I'm above and beyond and the devil is left far behind. That picture is accurate. It was accurate when Elijah had the Holy Spirit come on him and he outran the chariots of Ahab, remember? And Ahab had a, a chariot driver named Jehu who was famous for driving fast. Amen. And so Jehu was, had the best animals in the land, but as they started running for the gates of Jezreel, the Spirit of the Lord came on the bald-headed prophet. So that just shows you if you're bald-headed, there's still hope for you. And you can still be used of God. Hallelujah. God doesn't care if you got a head full of hair or no hair on top. He'll bless whoever honors him. And, and the Holy Ghost came on that bald-headed preacher, and he outran the chariots of Ahab all the way back to Jezreel. Somebody say amen. Amen. It was 15 miles, by the way. It was 15 miles back to the gates of Jezreel. So you tell me that the Holy Ghost 
is not always giving us ascendancy over the power of the devil. And as we go progressively darker, and we are growing darker, and as, you know, these things, government or whatever, begin to move in and begin to try to control us spiritually, we as the people of God are going to have to be. It's a mandate. It's an order. Be filled with the Spirit. Jesus commanded them before he left. The last words Jesus spoke on earth were, be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. Don't go anywhere. Go to the upper room and be filled with the Spirit. If that mandate was true in the first century, now in the 21st century, it's more true than ever. Your biggest problem isn't the devil. Your biggest problem is you leak. You need the Holy Ghost put in every day because we leak. Come on, somebody say amen. You can get a blessing this morning and by Tuesday, you're acting like the Antichrist. We leak. We've got to continually be refilled, 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 refilled with the Holy Spirit. Pray every day in tongues. Invite the third part of the Trinity into your life. He's the one that was left here to ensure our safe passage to heaven. And I'm not about to abandon him. I'm about to get closer to him. Somebody say amen. I thought about this flying aspect as my daughter related this story. And I thought, you know, that's the very thing that the world does through drugs and alcohol. And through switching through sex partners and through gambling and through all the, the, the vices of the flesh, they're looking for something to get away. They're looking for something to make them happy. Checking out through the grocery store and this young guy's got all these cases of beer and wine and, and all of this stuff. And he said, we're going to party. And I thought, no, you're going to poison your liver and have a hangover and maybe run over somebody over the weekend. But, you know, uh, they're, they're, they're looking for escape. They got to have an escape valve. If they're going to have fun, they got to have alcohol because that's the only thing that can help them to escape. And it deadens your nerves and your senses and makes you talk stupid and do stupid things. And it poisons your body. But I thought about the Holy Spirit takes us up and out and we get a temporary reprieve. But it's heaven, not hell. It's, it's the Holy Spirit, not drugs. It's the power of God, not alcohol. It is the escape that God planned for man to have. God understands that even as the redeemed of God, we go through trials and tests. We get weighed down. We're just naturally in this house of flesh. And we struggle with things like everybody else. But we've got an escape valve. And that is the Holy Spirit. He comes upon us and he lifts us. He lifts our hearts. He lifts our heads. He takes us to another place. We are, Paul said, we're lifted up into the heavenly places in Christ. We're reminded that God is in control of planet earth and that we are soon to be exiting straight up in the coming of the Lord. We know where the battle is and we understand that the enemy is defeated when we are locked in with God. God through the power of the Holy Spirit. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Years ago, the Lord gave me this poem. There was a period of time there years ago when God just started giving me poems, and I wrote about 20 or 30 of them. And then it let up and I quit writing them. So I don't know, but it was just a time in my life. But the Lord gave me this, the space capsule. I don't know if you can read it up here, but I'll read it to you. Prayer is a space capsule that takes me on high from the space-time continuums to eternity's heights. And there I land at the throne of grace where the Father and Son listen as the Spirit pleads my case. The Father is pleased and the Son gives a smile as the Spirit whispers comfort and instructions of grace. And Satan is removed from my side. No accusing now. He just hisses a big angel has taped his mouth. You want to make the devil shut up? Yeah. That boy said, yeah. Get full of the Holy Ghost. Pray in tongues. Kick the devil out of your mind. 
Kick his influence away from your life. Believe God because the Holy Ghost will put you in a complete another dimension. Come on, some, you're, you're so quiet. Clap your hands, bang your hands together. Come on, act like you're alive this morning. Praise God. I know it's hot and you're sticky under your arms, but you've got to get into this. I said, you need to get into this. God's got something for you. He brought you here and he wants to give you something from heaven. Hallelujah. A big angel has taped his mouth. So I return to the struggles below, strengthen and encourage with the joy of the Lord. And I take comfort in knowing that heaven is so close, the capsule is always waiting. In an instant, I can be with the Lord. My space capsule. Somebody say amen. My space capsule. I can get away from it all. Hallelujah. Is your wife driving you crazy? Has she got a honeydew list about a mile long? Has she been chewing on your ears? You need to get away. Hallelujah. Go somewhere with a Bible and a jug of water and spend some time in the Holy Ghost. And when you come down off of that trip, you'll feel better about her. Come on, you'll come out with a smile on your face saying, honey, I still love you. I thank God you're my sugar plum. Hallelujah. Instead of starting a World War III fight and having all kinds of stuff, come on. It depends on where you are spiritually with God. We have got to get back to the, the power of the Holy Spirit working his wonders in our life. Drugs and alcohol take you away from yourself. They remove your conscious mind. They do things in you by depressing you. But the Holy Ghost takes you away from your conscious self, your battles, and lifts you into the heavenly realm where you see God and you feel God and you hear instructions from another world and you can stand up and square your shoulders and boldly face the lies and the taunts of the enemy because nothing is impossible to him that believes. Can I hear an amen? Nothing is impossible. When the spaceship is out there in space, he does 17,000 miles an hour. Hallelujah. But you know, when you look at them taping out there and sending signals back, it looks like they're barely moving, but they're moving 17,000 miles an hour. Here on earth, we pray, and it seems like we're barely moving, but up in the heavenlies, the Spirit of God is moving at the speed of sound, the speed of light, the speed of thought. He's taking care of business. God's out ahead of you on Monday and Tuesday already. He's preparing a way. The Bible declares that he goes before us, and he's also behind us. God said in Isaiah, Isaiah, I'll be your rear guard and I'll be your front guard. I'll go out tomorrow ahead of you and I'll make sure your life is going to be successful. Why? Because I'm living and dwelling in the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. You know how when you fly in an airplane, everything looks so small. I flew one time from L.A. Uh, back to Tulsa. And this woman sat beside me, young woman, and we got to talking and she was by the window seat and she kept looking out and she said, oh my God, this LA, it just goes forever. I said, I know it. And then we got to Tulsa and I, and I looked out and I said, we should be over the town right now. And she said, oh my God. I said, what? She said, it looks like a hole in the road. <laughs> Tulsa looks like a hole in the road. I thought that's a good description for a small town in the Midwest. A hole in the road. It's nothing like LA. When you get full of the Holy Ghost, your trials look like a hole in the road. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. I want to talk to you about what the book of Ephesians revealed that the Holy Ghost is. I think we'll appreciate the Holy Ghost more if we understand who he is by the descriptions that Paul gives of him in the book of Ephesians. There are six or seven of them, and I want to go through them quickly. Number one, he is the guarantee. In Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 14, the Bible says that he, the Holy Ghost, is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession. 
Till we get to heaven, my guarantee that I'm going to be in heaven and that I have a reward is the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost guarantees it. God guarantees it. As long as I can pray in tongue, I know I have a guarantee. Not a good housekeeping seal of approval, but from heaven itself. Number two, he is the revealer. In Ephesians 3, 5, he's, Paul said it has been revealed to us by the Spirit. The Holy Ghost is the revealer. He shows us things. He keeps us ahead. He, he watches your front and your back and he watches your kids and your grandkids and he speaks to us and he gives us direction and guidance. Hallelujah. Thank God for the revealer that shows us things, speaks to our hearts. You know, this happens over and over again thousands of times in our lives. Thousands. This week has been maybe a hundred things that the Holy Ghost has revealed to me. I remember one time we were, this was years ago when my wife was driving that white uh, Beamer. And uh, we, we were done with the service and I was walking out. And I walked right through those doors and the Holy Ghost spoke to my heart. And he said, check her back tires. And I thought, that's weird. Why would I? And I looked and the right back tire had the metal showing through on that tire on the inside. You couldn't see it from the outside, but on the inside, I got underneath and looked, and I thought, oh, my God, that tire's going to pop. That's just a tiny little thing, but that's just the Holy Ghost. Come on. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. He's the revealer. I had a friend in Tulsa, a medical doctor, and he went with me to Haiti when I was working in evangelism. We did some missionary evangelism together, and he was a man that struggled with the Holy Ghost, and, and he had a hard time with the Holy Ghost. He was too intellectual. He was too, he was too smart for the Holy Ghost. He tried to approach the Holy Ghost like he did medical stuff. And you can't get the Holy Ghost with your mind. You get it with your heart. You have to just open them like a child. And, and when he gives utterance, you say it. And you don't worry about it. But he, he struggled and struggled and struggled. And I worked with him, talked to him. And, and he said, uh, one day he had it out with the Holy Ghost. He said, I locked the doors. I moved the coffee table in the living room. I laid on my stomach and I said, Holy Ghost, I'm not moving from this spot till you feel me. However long it takes, I'm staying on the floor till I get the Holy Ghost. Boy, I wish somebody had that desire to go that far in God. If you knew who the Holy Ghost was, you'd be going after him. If you knew what benefits there were, you'd be going after him. And he stayed down there and he prayed and it was three or four hours. He said, finally, I got so lathered up. I got so worn out. He said, I, I, I was thirsty. I needed a drink. And I had to go to the bathroom, but I told the Holy Ghost I wouldn't move until I got the Holy Ghost. And I said, Holy Ghost, you got to hurry. <laughs> All of a sudden, the power of God comes on him, and he begins to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gives utterance. The power of God flowed through him. And he said, I shook under the power of God. I shook under the power for hours. And he said, man, I got up and I felt drunk and he said, I could barely walk. And he said, the Holy Ghost said, by the way, your keys are in the trash in the garage. For three days, I'd been looking for my keys. And I couldn't find them. But the Holy Ghost knew where the keys were in the trash in the garage. Come on. It, it, if nothing else... That's good to know that the Holy Ghost knows where your keys are. He's better than those little sonar things you put on your key ring. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He's a revealer. Number three, he gives us power. In Ephesians 3.16, we are empowered for the work of God that he would grant to you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. In Acts 1.8, it's called dunamis. Power, dynamite's what we get our English word from, dynamite. He will give you powerful dynamite. 
He'll cause things to happen. He will cause things to happen. Somebody say amen. amen. Do you know God's working? In, if you're praying in tongues every day, God's working in your life. He's active. It's ongoing. He's doing things that you can't even imagine. Somebody say amen. This, this last week, I had things that came as a result of about 15 years of prayer for one person, and God answered it and did the miracle. And I've been on a high. I'm so high I could go duck hunting with a yard rake. I got that from Reed Gibson. <laughs> but let me share with you, the Holy Ghost is power. I said the Holy Ghost is power. That's his biggest designation. You shall receive power. You can speak to the enemy and tell him to shut up and he'll shut up. For greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Hallelujah. Matt, when the devil gets to messing with you, tell him, shut up in the name of Jesus. He'll shut up. I got a package sent this last week to me. A big box. Said Doug Chambers. So I opened it because that's my name. And I looked inside and there was this exercise equipment, these pneumatic things that they work on your chest and stuff. And I said to my wife, did you order me some exercise equipment? I know I need it, but she said, no, I didn't order it. I called family members. Did it, this get sent to the wrong place? No, nobody's ordered it. And I said, but it says Doug Chambers. So I found the invoice inside and I thought I'll call. I'll call uh, in a couple days on Monday, last week, and I'll tell those people they got the wrong guy. And I noticed the address that was on the invoice was a P.O. box, and they can't ship stuff to P.O. boxes. So somebody looked up the address and found mine. And then I remembered that 20-something, 20 25 maybe years ago, I went into a tennis shop, and the owner of the tennis shop said, I can't believe it, there's two Doug Chambers here. And she introduced me to this other guy, and we exchanged cards. He's an attorney in Long Beach. I'm a preacher in Bellflower. So we exchanged cards. And we talked about, you know, we have the same name. And that was 25 years ago. And I thought, I wonder if this is for the other guy. And suddenly I thought, well, I'll just wait till Monday. And I sat down and I felt a quickening of the Holy Ghost. Don't wait till Monday. Find that guy. And I thought, I can't find him. He's an attorney. He's not going to have a publicly listed phone. But sure enough, I Google. Thank God for Google. And I found him. I found a phone number. And I called and he answered. And I said, is this Doug Chambers? He said, yes. I said, well, this is Doug Chambers. He said, you know, 25 years ago, I met a guy in a tennis shop whose name was Doug Chambers. I said, that's me. He said, you're still here? I said, you're still here. He said, yeah. I said, I think I got, you. did you order exercise stuff? Yeah. He said, hey, don't worry about it. I only live about 15 minutes from you. It's only 10 o'clock at night. I'll come by and pick it up. I said, okay. So I got out on the front porch, waited 10 minutes. Here comes an SUV, pulls up, and we start talking. He said, isn't that a trip? We got the same name, and we live close to each other. I said, yeah, and we're both tennis players. He said, yeah. What similarities? How strange it is. He said, are you still preaching? I said, I am. I said, are you still an attorney? He said, no, I'm not. He said, I have this other company now. I do different things. And so we got to talking, and he said, by the way, where were you born? I said, Oklahoma City. He said, you're kidding me. I said, why? He said, I was born in Edmond, and Edmond is a suburb of Oklahoma City. And he said, what kind of religion do you pastor? I said, well, it used to be Assembly of God. He went, you've got to be kidding me. I said, why? He said, I was raised from the time I was born till I was 12 with my grandparents in an Assembly of God church in Edmond, Oklahoma. 
He said, I still tell my four kids stories about that church. He said, there was lots of stories. He said, my grandma used to get happy and shout. He said, there used to be this thing called messages in tongues. I said, I know all about it. He said, nobody does that anymore. I said, we do. He said, are you kidding? Do you speak in tongues? I said, yeah, every day. He said, wow, I can't believe that there's somebody that still believes, and we're from Oklahoma. I said, this is a God thing. And I began to find out that his grandparents had prayed for him and prayed for him. And his family had been praying for him. And here he is all these years later, still without God, but still hungry. He said, I got a lot of questions. Could I talk to you right now? I said, sure. He started asking me questions. But he was asking them out of a good heart. And I could see that he had a searching heart. And I had a common ground. So we're going to get together and play tennis. He's going to hit the tennis ball, and I'm going to hit the Holy Ghost. Why? Because somebody, for a lot of years ago, they may be gone to glory now, but they prayed for that boy. They prayed for that boy. And the prayers of those grandparents have gone forward 40 years and found this man and had his address sent to me. Hallelujah. Because God is a God who answers prayer. The Holy Ghost works. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost works. The Holy Ghost works. You may have prayed a prayer for somebody and you haven't seen anything happen. Don't worry about it. While it looks like God's doing nothing, he's working overtime. He's all the time working. He's honoring your prayer. He's keeping his post and doing what he's promised. Hallelujah. And God will bring a fulfillment of what he has promised to his people. We are the bride of Christ. We are his cherished ones. We are honored by heaven and God will not forsake his own people, but he will keep his word. He will keep his word. Be encouraged, lift up your head and be blessed today because God is gonna keep his word. Hallelujah. 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 Don't you ever give up. The only way you can be defeated is if you throw in the towel. Hallelujah. Pray no matter what happens. Believe no matter what happens. Keep praying in the spirit no matter what happens. He's the spirit of unity. The Holy Ghost will keep you. Endeavor, chapter 4 and verse 3. Keep the spirit of unity in the bond of peace. Keep the spirit of unity in the bond of peace. You can't do it without the Holy Ghost. Your mouth is too big. Your heart is too mean. You can chop people down and cut them up in little pieces without even trying. We're all meaner than we look. Come on. <laughs> I know we're saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, but we're also flesh. And the flesh can rise up and get control. Somebody say amen. Spirit of unity. Arguments, contentions always come when the Holy Spirit leaves. My dad's counsel to me when I first pastored this church, 38 years ago, he said, listen, the key to pastoring is to keep the people full of the Holy Ghost. They'll stay in love and unity. He said, if you let the Holy Ghost leak out of those services, he said, they'll get meaner than, meaner than junkyard dogs. Yeah. They'll get divisive. They'll get, they, they will gossip. All kinds of flesh rises up when we don't keep it subdued by the Holy Ghost. Somebody say amen. 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 He's the spirit of holiness, chapter 4 and verse 30. He can be grieved if we persist in carnality and bitterness, wrath, and anger. He can be grieved. He's a holy spirit. He wants you to be kind, tender-hearted, forgiving each other. Hallelujah. 
Amen. Be a giving person. Don't be tight and chintzy. Amen. Pick up the tab at the table. Be a giver. Amen. Praise the Lord. Be a giver. Sometimes God will speak to you to do, do extravagant giving. That's, too, that's good too. He's just checking your heart. See if he's really God. Amen. He's the spirit of holiness. He is the fountain from which we are continuously filled. Chapter 5 and verse 18. Be not drunk with wine, which leads to debauchery, but be filled with the spirit. We are continuously filled. Somebody say amen. Continuously filled. I went on a fast this week and uh, with another person, and we fasted the same amount of days. And I let them dictate the, the conditions, and the person said, water only. And uh, it's been a long time since I've done a water only fast, and I found out that your body knows how to scream and put up a fit when you don't do anything but water for several days. Oh, I tell you, but it's good to let the body know you're not in control. Buster Brown, you're going to bow your will to the will of God. <laughs> Come on. I just got to have my Pepsi. No, you don't. Oh, I can't do that food. My stomach hurts. It's supposed to hurt. My stomach growls. It's supposed to growl. You're supposed to show your flesh. The Spirit of God in you is stronger than it is. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. One young man that got saved in our church years ago said, man, I've been on a fast this week. <clears throat> I said, well, that's great. <clears throat> I said, did you eat, do a partial? He said, yeah, I did a partial. He said, I gave up cheeseburgers and sh shakes. I thought, well, I don't know. Okay. Cheeseburgers and shakes, they're out. <laughs> Amen. Lastly, in chapter 6, verse 17, the Holy Ghost is the giver of the word as a sword for battle. A giver of the word as a sword for battle. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, taking the helmet, the sword of the Spirit, and the word of God. Hallelujah. The Lord told Reinhard Bonnke, my word coming out of your mouth is just as powerful as my word coming out of my mouth. So speak my word like a sword and fly in the Holy Ghost and retain ascendancy over the powers of darkness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Jesus said, I'll not leave you orphans. I will come to you. John 14, 18. How? I'll send you this helper. He will abide with you forever. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. I love that he's called the spirit of truth. Somebody say amen. amen. I love. Someone told me they did counseling with someone that this week, a professional. And, and this professional counselor said to this person, well, what is your truth? What is your truth on this? And this person was raised a Christian, and they said, it's not my truth, it's the truth. But isn't it funny how our society has moved away from this book, and we invent our own truth. What is your truth? Your truth is a lie. Your truth is a fantasy. Your truth doesn't exist. There is only one truth. And it's right here. Can I hear an amen? Does anybody believe that? This is the word of God, not a word. There are not many paths to heaven. There's one path to get to glory. Somebody say amen. And he will teach you all things. So that Paul said in Colossians 1, we are complete in him. Hallelujah. Oh, let's stand together this morning. Praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah.